The terrible, devastating earthquake and tsunami in Japan did not just take a toll on human lives. It also took a toll on our future in terms of energy development, particularly with nuclear power. Here with us to tell us more and what some of the implications may be is INSEAD Professor Paul Kleindorfer, our expert in sustainability. Thank you for being with us. Well, I'm happy to be here, Shelley. Obviously, the human toll was by far, at the moment, the, the worst part of this disaster. But looking forward a little bit, there's the immediate problem of radiation and the impact on alternative energy. Can we look a little bit right now at what the immediate impact is of any kind of irradiation clouds, problems for, for the world? The problems uh, uh, resulting at the Fukushima reactor site are going to be, I think, fairly significant. Uh, they are classed currently as a, a level six on the international atomic energy scale of uh, nuclear incidents. The only class seven incident that we had was the 86 uh, blowout at the Chernobyl uh, installation. So it's a very serious matter. This is an extremely rare event, perhaps you know, one of five such events that we've had in, uh, let's say, in, in, in history uh, in which paleo seismologists, uh, that is people who go after uh, ancient events can track, go back around 5,000 years, it's difficult to find very many 9.0 earthquakes. Remember, this is 100 times more uh, significant in terms of ground shaking motion than a 7.0 earthquake. And 7.0 earthquakes do a lot of damage. We saw the 1999 earthquake in, uh, in, in Taiwan, the 7.3 earthquake in, in May in China. Those do a lot of damage. This is 9.0. This is you know, somewhere between 50 and 100 times greater than those earthquakes. That's a very rare event. Japan actually did have um, a state-of-the-art technology here. I mean, they, they, uh, earthquakes are not unknown here. Um, right. They must have been prepared. Could they have been more prepared? Uh, these were reactors that were put into place, those that failed in the 60s, uh, in the 1960s. And what will be said, and what has already been said exhaustively, is that uh, the containment procedures were not, uh, were, if you will, not as uh, robust, as resilient as later containment procedures were. Uh, the original uh, trade-offs that were made in terms of cost versus safety were made perhaps more in the direction of cost, it will now be asserted at least, than should have been. And uh, as a result, while Japan, uh, in response to your question, has a very um, uh, advanced state of uh, readiness, of knowledge, of ability to respond to nuclear accidents and incidents, uh, certainly one of the best in the world, uh, the ability to respond to a 9.0 earthquake uh, the ability to respond to an ensuing tsunami and to do so with technologies that will now be asserted as having not been up to, 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 to snuff with respect to uh, the proper uh, safety cost trade-offs. Those are the issues that are going to be examined in some detail. Going forward, looking at alternative sources of energy to fossil fuels, nuclear energy had been touted as the thing that could actually be the economy of scale for the amount of energy that's needed in the world. What is this accident going to have to the future development of nuclear energy? I certainly think that up until uh, the Japan earthquake, uh, there was a huge renaissance, a belief that the nuclear industry all over the world uh, was going to have a, a significant increase. The number of installations started in the U.S. and elsewhere was growing all sorts of licensing and siting procedures, the newest technologies to be sure, but nonetheless the, the whole spirit of it was a renaissance in this, uh, in this area. You saw it in the stocks of the, uh, of the companies that were involved in these areas. Uh, you saw it in the risk management and the siting procedures. Anyway, that's pre-Fukushima. I think post-Fukushima we are going to have a very interesting uh, discussion. And it's going to involve uh, questions uh, first about uh, safety and about whether indeed somehow the cost and safety margins were sold short uh, in terms of safety. Uh, we now see ourselves uh, with, a, with a real problem as to indeed whether nuclear technology is just too complicated 
uh, for normal mortal man to control uh, over a period of 50 years, which is the life of one of these institutions on an ongoing basis, without giving rise to huge risks for third parties. My own belief in it is that uh, there are regions of the world, uh, France, uh, many parts of the United States, where that argument has considerable sway because the problems of failing to attend to climate change issues and fossil fuel dangers and all of the problems of mining coal and the rest of it that have their own mortality and disease, uh, all of those problems have to be put on the scale. And you put those on the scale, and I think that nuclear power does have a proper place as a part of an efficient portfolio of energy technologies. This gives a whole new meaning to risk management. Uh, I see that industry changing a great deal. Uh, not just in attending to the risk, but in paying for the risk. Do, can you make any kind of comment as to how that industry is likely to change both in the management of the risk and paying for the risk? This is all giving rise, I think, to a, a healthy reassessment of uh, how it is that, um, that strategic risk management for companies should take place against a new uh, tone of humility uh, given the complexities and interdependencies of the global economy. So that's what I think is uh, in front of us, uh, and I think the risk management parts of that are, are, going to, uh, are going to be put through a real scrutiny as we start to look at, uh, at some of these events of the past year and ask ourselves the direct question, what do we really know about how able we as a company, I'm thinking from a company's perspective, or as a society, how, what do we really know about our resilience in, able, in, in, in the ability to respond to events that we haven't really expected until now, but that we are reminded of very forcefully uh, through uh, the processes and the events taking place in Japan before our very eyes these days. Let me end by asking you for your assessment of going forward now the outlook for nuclear energy as, a, as part of a portfolio of alternative energy to fossil fuel. I expect uh, Japan, China, and the Far East to continue on their path of nuclear power development uh, to make the case that uh, the Mark I uh, or the earlier versions of those reactors are not what is in uh, the later versions of those reactors, that they are much more resilient and robust and that this is, in fact, an important part of their, uh, of their energy portfolio going forward. I expect that uh, in the United States, uh, where there is all, all, uh, already considerable uh, resistance in, uh, in certain parts of the, uh, of the country, uh, that uh, anywhere approaching a seismic zone, that includes the Midwest uh, and the great uh, Memphis uh, area, which had one of the greatest earthquakes in around 1811, 1812, this includes uh, California, uh, any area which is seismically active, I'm, we're going to see um, a more or less a halt, a moratorium for a while, and perhaps for a long while, uh, to, uh, to new reactor sightings, uh, and in fact even to the use of nuclear power in the portfolio. But you know, we're at a level uh, less than 5% uh, production of global energy uh, through renewable energies at this point. And so it's going to be a long while before we are in a position to replace, uh, uh, let's say, the prospect of nuclear as a low carbon production base load uh, facility. So this is a very, an area of uh, great uncertainty going forward. Regionally, uh, there'll be big differences and uh, some very difficult questions both for business people involved in this, uh, for regulators involved in this, but also for the citizens of the planet to come to grips with this huge trade-off that we have between on the one side the risks of, uh, of carbon producing uh, fossil fuel plants and uh, the, the, the steady rundown of our fossil fuel uh, supplies, and on the other side the evident dangers of uh, relying on very complicated technologies such as nuclear. How that will be resolved is um, yet to be seen, but it's of course going to be um, 
if not the major topic in the energy area, certainly one of the crucial energy, energy topics and policy for the next five years. Professor Paul Kleindorfer, thank you for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. My pleasure, Shelley.